Hey guys, how's it going? I uh, wanted to give you a lesson today on the Circle of Fifths. Um, Circle of Fifths is this amazingly powerful musical tool, but unfortunately a lot of people don't really understand how to use it. It can be pretty confusing. So uh, I'm going to show you two things. First, what it is, uh, some really quick ways to remember it. Uh, within a minute or two, you should know it forever. And then, uh, and then I'm going to show you what to actually do with it and why it's so useful uh, musically. So, start with... Um, we're going to build a circle of fifths, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to arrange all 12 notes around this circle. But rather than do them in order, we're going to separate them by the interval of a fifth. I'll show you that in a second. So we're going to start with C up at the top. Uh, a lot of musical things kind of center around the note C. You should be getting pretty used to that by now. Um, and then after C, we're going to, we're going to find a note that is uh, separated by a fifth. So I'll show you on the little keyboard here. Um, hopefully you remember what a fifth is. It's just... Uh, seven half, half steps. Um, so if we start on C, you go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that note right there, G, is a fifth away from C. So that would be the next note on the wheel. Um, and then from G, we're going to go over another fifth. So from G, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, there's, there's much better ways of finding a fifth and counting uh, each and every half step. I did a video a long time ago called How Basic Chords Work, and I kind of cover all that if you wanted to review. Uh, but anyway, next note is D, so that'll be the next note in the wheel. And then from D, we go to A, and I'll just kind of fill in the rest here. B goes to F sharp, you gotta be careful with this one. Um, start on B and you count up a fifth, you wind up on uh, right here, on F sharp. So, anyway, that's uh, one half of the circle right there. And then to get the other half, we actually could just keep going around, but it's generally much easier to just go back to the top and start counting in the other direction. Uh, so we'll do that. If you go back to C, and then you go uh, down by a fifth, you wind up on F. So F is the next note. And then from F, you get B flat. Same kind of thing, you gotta be, gotta be careful there. F to B flat. And then if you keep going, you would get E flat, A flat, and D flat. And there you go, there's a circle of fifths. Uh, now, if you are trying to remember the circle of fifths, of course, one way is to do what I just did. Um, you start at the top at C and you uh, you go around by fifths. Um, the, the technique is kind of in the name, everything's separated by a fifth. Uh, but it's probably not the easiest way to remember it. Uh, I recommend using mnemonics, just a couple little sayings and you can remember it. Um, <laughs> what I always teach, these are kind of stupid, but um, Carolyn gets drunk and eats butterflies is how you remember the right half. And then for the left half, Carolyn fondles beads. Um, like I said, they're kind of weird, and if I'm teaching a little kid, I kind of church it up a little bit. Um, but anyway, if you kind of just ponder that for a moment, it's, it's hard to ever forget it. And there you go. So there's a circle of fits. Now... Like I said, the, uh, the important part is what you actually do with it. And this is where a lot of people do get stuck. So this right here is the critical point. And if you forget everything else I say in this video, this is what you have to remember. What I just wrote down, C, G, D, all these, these can represent different things. These could represent notes, they could represent chords, or they could represent keys. And the circle of fifths gets used in all three ways. So we'll start by uh, using this as an arrangement of notes. And I'll show you a couple things you can do with that. So we'll start by thinking of these as notes. And when you think of these as notes, let's, let's start on C for a second, right? Let's suppose that we wanted to create a C major chord. Now you probably already know how to do this, but just kind of bear with me here. Um, so we say, say we want to make a C major chord, but we don't really know what's in it. Now the first note, course is obvious it's going to be C but it's a three note chord and we have to figure out the other two notes now if you remember the formula for a major chord the the middle note is a major third which uh, is two whole steps so just to show you on the keys again um, starting on C you'd go up two whole steps you'd wind up on E so that's your middle note but figuring out this next note can be tough because this is pretty far away from C so you're having to do a lot of counting to kind of get there um, but this note is a fifth and if you know your circle of fifths, then you immediately know that if you go up a fifth, you get to G. It's written out right there. So that, that means 
and this next note is a G. And there's your C major chord. Now, let's do a slightly more complicated example. So let's say you're trying to figure out an A flat major 7 chord. Now, most likely you don't know this chord right off the bat. So this is a four note chord. So there's three mystery notes here. Uh, now to find the, this second note, um, same technique as the, the C major chord, you're gonna go up two whole steps. So from A flat, uh, one whole step up would be B flat, and then the next note would be C. I'll, I'll show you on the keys just to make it easier. Um, a flat, B flat, and then C. So there's your major third. No real shortcut for that note, uh, but it's not hard to figure out. Uh, middle note though, or this uh, third note, that's a fifth, uh, same as the C chord. So if you know your circle of fifths, you go over by one tick. Remember, we're, we're going up by a fifth, you know, not down by a fifth. Um, so that puts us on E flat, and that's the next note in the chord. And that's the hardest one to figure out, uh, or would be, if you didn't know your circle of fifths. Now for the last note, uh, this one's real simple. Uh, when you have a major seventh chord, this last note is just one, uh, one note underneath your octave. So if we're going up to an A flat, we go down one, you get G natural. So you have G. And there's your A flat major seven chord. Much, much easier to do if you know your circle of fifths. Otherwise you have to do a lot more counting around. So that's one, one big use of the circle of fifths uh, when you're thinking of it in terms of notes. Um, you can also use it for harmonizing notes, saying you're writing a melody and you're trying to write, you, know, you have a melodic line and you're gonna write another melodic line that's say a fifth higher. That's a, a really common harmony to do here in vocal music all the time. Uh, knowing your circle of fifths makes that you know, much, much easier to do. Um, but there's lots of different kind of useful ways to, to use it as far as notes. Uh, now the, the second way to use it, and like I said, this is kind of fundamentally different. You're not, you're not thinking of these as notes anymore. Now you're thinking of them as chords. Okay, so I'll show you why it'd be useful to think of this as chords. Uh, so let's suppose that this C now represents a C major, the G represents a G major, D major, A major, and so on. Uh, so let's also suppose that, uh, let's say we're in the key of B flat. Right, and uh, our, our root chord in this key is B flat major. Uh, now there are two chords that are probably the most important chords in any key. That is your root chord, so in this case this B flat major, and then there's your dominant chord, your five chord. And that five chord is the chord that provides the tension, that sort of really tense part of the key. And it's, it's kind of like the polar opposite of your root chord. So if you're having to count around and think, okay, what's my five? I have B flat, C, D, E. It's difficult to find that chord quickly, but if you know your circle of fifths, you immediately know that your five chord is F. So that's our dominant chord, the one that provides all that tension. And of course, you could do the same thing for, for any other key. Uh, if you're in the key of D, you know your five chord is an A major chord. If you're in the key of D flat, your five chord is an A flat chord. So that's a really useful way to use the circle of fifths in terms of chords. Uh, the third, final, and I think most valuable way is to use it uh, as a map of keys. So this would be C major, F major, B flat major, all the way around. So when you're thinking of this as keys, there's a couple really cool things that it will do for you. First, and I think most important, especially if you're, uh, if you're writing music, is it shows you what keys are similar to each other. What I mean by that, if you look at, say, the key of C, we'll look at it on the, my little keyboard again. Um, the key of C, all major keys have seven notes in them. The key of C has C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. So these, these seven, right? The key of G, if you look at the notes in the key of G, you have G, A, B, C, D, E, and then F sharp. Um, so it's, it's actually very similar. It has all the same notes except the F is an F sharp now. So let's say you're writing a piece of music, that you're in the key of C, and you want to change keys. If you know that the key of G is very similar to the key of C, then you know that it won't be all that hard to get your music to transition from C to G. The, the tricky part of a key change is getting the new notes in the key to, to sort of 
be accepted by your listener. If you throw a whole bunch of new sounds at them all of a sudden, it can sound really jarring and, and like it just doesn't fit. But if you only have one note different, that's a much easier transition to make. So C and G is a very easy key change to do. But let's look at the key of F sharp for a second. This is on the opposite end of the circle of fifths here. And what that means is that there's hardly any notes that are similar between C and F sharp. So the, the notes in, in F sharp major would be F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp. And this you would actually call E sharp. I won't get into the details of why you would be calling this E sharp and not F today. I'll save that for a later lesson. But the point is, almost all the notes are different. So that means that if you wanted to do a key change from C to F sharp, you have a lot of new notes that you have to kind of shove in there and, and try to get the, the listener to sort of accept all at once. And it's very hard to do that without sounding really abrupt. Um, so most likely if you were trying to change keys between C and F sharp, you would actually probably go through a, a bunch of sort of transitional keys. You might go from C to G, which is an easy key change, maybe G to A, those aren't too far apart. And you kind of work your way around the wheel, kind of introducing one new note at a time and trying to get that to be comfortable uh, before you make it all the way around to F sharp. Um, and that goes for any key change. If you wanted to go from D to the key of A flat, those are very far apart, very hard to get between. But say you wanted to go from D to the key of G, that's not hard to do at all. So it's a really powerful compositional tool. You can think of it in terms of this sort of key map. Now the other thing uh, that it's really used for when you're thinking of this uh, in terms of keys is it can show you almost right away um, how many sharps or flats are in a key and it can even show you what those sharps or flats are. So we'll do a couple examples. Um, if you start out in the key of C, of course C has no sharps and no flats, so not much to think about there, but say you're in the key of G. Key of G has one sharp in it because it's just kind of one tick over on the, on the wheel. Key of D would have two sharps in it, key of A would have three, and so on. Um, and you can actually uh, know what they are almost right away. Let's say we're in the key of G. Move that out of the way. Uh, in the key of G, you're going to have one sharp. It's going to be an F. You kind of start uh, two ticks back, and that's where the sharps start. Um, if you go to the key of D, it's also going to have an F sharp, but it's going to add a C sharp. In the key of A, you'll have an F sharp, a C sharp, and a G sharp. Um, as you kind of move around the wheel, uh, you start introducing sharps one at a time, starting at F. Um, so you can kind of just start from here and count around, um, and you, you stop with you know one one note in between the the key that you're looking at. So A would be F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. Simple enough. Um, now if you if you kind of go around the wheel in reverse, you go to the left, you actually look at the flat keys. So again, C, no sharps, no flats. But if you go to the key of F, F has one flat in it. The key of B flat has two flats in it. E flat has three flats, and so on. Um, now if you uh, look at the key of F, remember it has one flat in it. The, the flats actually start right here on B flat. So the key of F would have a B flat. Um, if you went to the key of B flat, it's kind of confusing. Um, Okay, say we're in the key of B flat, you would have a B flat, obviously, and then you would have an E flat. The flats uh, kind of keep progressing around the circle uh, counterclockwise, and they, they basically stay one tick in front of the key you're looking at. So if you're looking at the key of E flat, um, you would have a B flat, an E flat, and an A flat. And that's basically how you would use a circle of fifths in terms of keys. Now there's plenty of other ways to use this. The, the point that I'm kind of trying to get at here is that it's a, a visual tool. It's a way of arranging notes um, in this sort of pattern of, of fits. And this pattern becomes useful for all different things, whether you're thinking of notes individually, like you're trying to build chords or scales. Didn't really talk about that, but it's the same idea. Um, you could be uh, looking at these letters as if they're chords, looking at how chords relate to each other, especially that dominant chord, root chord relationship. Um, and then you can also be looking at these as keys. 
Um, so that's basically it. I know this lesson is a little more advanced than some of the other ones I've done. You kind of have to know a few things to be at this point. But even if you don't, um, you can still learn the circle of fifths in just a minute or two. It's really simple and uh, it'll just become more and more useful to you as you're learning music and kind of putting things together in your head. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, I'll, I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, and yeah, thanks again.